You know, what is a dipsy diver? Simply put, a dipsy diver is a directional diver that is forced down. There's a big hunk of lead in the back here. And as you angle this, the settings go from zero to three, both left and right, and it will angle out as you adjust this weight. So you can actually cover, kind of like underwater planer boards, you can cover different areas of the water column and also distances away from the boat, which allows you to run multiple rods and cover more water. You've got a little tripping mechanism that allows this to force down, and when the fish bites, the dipsy is released so you're not fighting the diver itself. Simply put, you can get very deep, whether you're fishing salmon, steelhead, or walleyes with a dipsy diver. You know, rigging the dipsy diver setup is incredibly important. And here's a little few tips and tricks that I think you'll find after a lot of hours of pulling dipsies, it'll make a big difference. One is using braided line. For most of my trolling applications, I'm using monofilament line, but you actually want to use braid because you don't want that stretch. You want that dipsy to be able to dive deeper, number one. Number two, you want to be able to see the bites because of the no stretch. And then you also want the release to be able to function very easily. Where with monofilament, you're going to have a lot of jello and you're going to have a lot of sling in there and it's gonna not trip the release when you want it tripped. From the braided line down to the diving device, I use a snap swivel. And I use a good quality one, probably a very much overkill for walleyes, but you have to remember in a lot of the waters that you're gonna fish, you may have salmon, steelhead, or other species, and a lot of wear and tear goes on this connection. So make sure that you use something with a good quality clasp and something with a good swivel. The other thing I like to do is put a small bead on the front because that's gonna keep the diver from going up into the rod tip. And believe it or not, people keep reeling and they go into the rod tip. A little trick for you is use different color beads so that you can tell what settings are on. So I use different beads knowing that this is my one setting or my two setting. So when I pick the rod up quickly, I don't have to look at the diver from a distance. I can see where the setting is actually at. It may sound like a silly tip until you're in the heat of battle, but simply putting some different colors of electroclake on the handle is also gonna let you know that this rod is a one setting or a two setting, or that it's your inside rod or your outside rod, because when buddies help, you get the kids going and rods are all over the place. The worst thing you can do is put an outside rod on the inside or a left on the right, you're gonna cross up and tangle everything. So something as a couple wraps of electrical tape are gonna allow you to know which rod goes where. The leader comes off the back, and I use a number three snap on the back I just put that on backwards so that I don't have to attach and unattach and uh, you know cut leaders. And that goes down to, like in this case, it's about a six foot leader, five to six foot leader. And for most of my crankbait and spoon applications, that's gonna be perfect. Now I also carry some extra leaders with me on a noodle that are 10, 12 foot long for when using crawler harnesses or fishing cranks in extremely clean water. And these just have a little number two dual lock at the end and then a small swivel to make the connection to the diver itself. Usually the leaders are made out of 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Storage can be an issue with dipsy divers, whether you're moving from spot to spot or you're going home for the day. You can see very easily these things are gonna tangle around. You're gonna have a big wad full and have to cut them up. So simply put, I use a little, little clamp here. This one's made for woodworking, but really any little clamp will do. And you put that on there and that way very quickly, you're gonna have a way of you're not tangling this up. You're gonna make sure you grab one rod, get one rod. And this works equally as well in the boat or in the garage. When you see a rod tip bouncing with a fish on, but maybe he hasn't tripped it. You know, some fish will swim with and they're bouncing it, but they haven't. What you wanna do is put your finger on the rod and just gently kind of jerk that just ever so slightly. And that way you're gonna feel that release trip. It's just a very sensitive deal. Don't do anything drastic because anything drastic means the fish is probably gonna come off. One of the tricks with dipsy divers is to hold the leader so nothing gets tangled up. One of the worst things you can do is allow this leader to get tangled around the release because it's gonna cut off the entire dipsy. So we wanna put this down, then kinda of toss it in, and either have the clicker on or have it in your hand when you're deploying it. You don't wanna go down too fast with the diver itself. Another thing you want is a very sturdy rod holder. Like I'm fishing for walleyes, they're probably not gonna break a rod holder. But steelhead, which often hit these things, can, or if you're fishing around areas that have king salmon. So I want this rod to be down, and I want it to be parallel with water. So I want that rod tip very close to the water. Then my second rod is gonna be up here, and you notice it's just a little bit higher, so I can get that out. Now my inside diver, which I always mark with red tape, my higher diver, which is marked with either white or black tape, is gonna be a little bit longer. So this is a seven and a half foot rod where my high diver is gonna be eight and a half. So that tip not only can't crash, but I can use them just like planer boards to see the reference to see if I have a fish on that's just really small or dragging. And I'm not gonna crash into there, but yet it's gonna be low. So the amount of line I was actually gonna be in the water to get diving depth. So let them out slow, make sure you got the right rod holder set up 
you're going to catch a lot more fish on Dipsy Divers.